Hello everyone, Seraphin here. Welcome back for more Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. When I last left you guys, we were just about finished with chapter 25. 24, excuse me, not 25. And we'll be taking care of that today. Because again, I don't think it'll take us very much longer. So let's go ahead and clear up this fellow here. We can do that with a silver single single silver axe hit. Wow, what did I just say? Who knows? So, I spent a lot of time last episode talking about three houses and well, various other sundry things. Uh, suffice it to say that I'm still... I'm actually kind of aching to get back into Three Houses. I wish I had the capability to capture that and play it for you guys. Uh, regrettably, I do not have that functionality. I don't have, for example, a Switch with a capture card or anything like that, so it's not something that I'm functionally able to do. But I really wish I could do that for you guys, because it really is a lot of fun to play. And it's an, it's honestly a joy to watch, too. I like watching other people play it, too. I watched two different Let's Play series of it on other people's channels. And I had... It was just... It's really intense. It's a lot of good stuff. Very good story. Very good gameplay. And uh, I'm actually... As I mentioned last time, I believe, I have a friend of mine who is not normally a fan of these types of games playing through it right now. And I'm actually enjoying kind of watching him go through it and kind of giving him tips and tricks that he, he's, he feels a little... What's what I'm looking for? He feels a little bit of disadvantage because he's not sure what he's doing half the time. Because it, honestly, I will say this about Three Houses, as much as I enjoy it, if you're new to the series and you're just playing that one, uh, the game doesn't really do that great of a job in telling you how to do a lot of things or explaining all the various different nuances and everything in the game. So if you're not familiar with that from a series perspective like I am, it's kind of it's, it's a little daunting. Well, I completely understand where my friend is coming from. And I don't mind being that guy helping him out. Are you the dog of a general? Well, that's not very nice. My name is Ike. Uh, yeah, okay, this Ricard guy thinks he's gonna do... Yeah, wow, okay, Ike could just crit him in one hit, too. No matter one's proven deeds, one defeat unmans us all. Yeah, well, maybe you shouldn't have been so confident. Also, he's got a very interesting purple shade on all of his armor here. Should be a level for Ike, I believe. I would like it if he got a little bit of strength. Nope, he's just getting... Well, luck, defense, and resistance. You know, I really can't complain about that, I guess. Has he maxed out his speed yet? No, he has not. That is max defense, though, on Ike. So he's not going to get any tougher. That's actually a lie. He is going to get tougher somehow, but we'll talk about that when it happens. Uh, that being said, he's very close to capping speed. I believe 28 is his speed cap. Uh, I believe 26 is his strength cap, and his skill, I think, actually caps at 30, so he's got a little bit of growing left to do. But we've got several chapters yet before that happens. And we're going to bring Raisin in here to dance. I know it looks a little sketch because I've got enemies that close, but... I honestly believe we'll be okay. I'm going to use Jill to take out the Ballista. Oscar can take out one of the Cavaliers. And Ike can take out another. So, goodbye Ballista. I forgot about those Wyverns down there almost again. Seems to be par for the course today. We're just forgetting about stuff. I think we're going to save the Killer Axe on her for right now and just keep using the Hell Swath. Did I mention the Hellswath is one of the Crusader weapons from Genealogy of the Holy War, that being Fire Emblem Forge? I just like naming the Forged ones after them because they just sound really cool. You've got stuff like Tearfing and Mistletane and Balmung and Hellswath. Frickin' Gungnir, which is like Odin's spear from Norse mythology. You know, there's a lot of cool stuff. Okay, so Marsha can't quite reach. What I might actually have to end up doing is having Oscar pick up Racing because there's two. What does this guy do? 12, 22 damage with 12 speed. Rayson can survive a hit like that, but he won't like it. So if I just focus on killing the two bow cavaliers, we sh Rayson will be fine. He won't like it very much, but... Oh, I don't double. That's the really annoying... Okay, Oscar, you are ticking me off now. I'm just going to have him rescue... Give him a short spear so we can counter the bows, but he's going to pick up Raisin. And Ike will take care of the Lance guy, I suppose. And then I need to start hustling Ike up toward the castle so we can finish the chapter. It's nice to still have that regal sword hanging around just for such an emergency. I say emergency, it's not really that I could have used a steel, steel blade probably, but just fine, but... Having a weapon with with uh, cavalry effectiveness that's very lightweight and also has a very good hit rate is nothing to shake at. 
Now that I think about it, I bet you those bow knights are going to be going for Marsha because... They're not Marsha, but the green unit. They're probably going to be going for the green unit, if I'm being totally honest. Just because that seems to make a lot of sense. We're going to send our magic guys back down here, just in case things get a little hairy. And I, of course, can try to blizzard somebody. Oh, nope, never mind. I'll save the blizzard to for when I really need it. I can probably one-shot one of the wyverns with it. If I'm being totally honest. Speaking of wyverns, let's go ahead and one-shot one of them over here. By one-shot, of course, being two. If I had that Zephyr bow, probably I could one-shot this guy, but not quite. Oh, even, even that probably wouldn't have been enough. Sadly, this is uh, an example in this installment where Weapon Might is only doubled when it's effective against someone, as opposed to tripled. Uh, it was only doubled as well in Blazing Sword, which apparently in the Japanese version of the game, it's not. Apparently in the Japanese version of, Bla of Blazing Sword, the Weapon Might is tripled on effectiveness, which is how the designers intended it to be, but at some point during the English localization, they made it only double, which is why Elowood struggles to kill things early on, even with his rapier, and when it's cavalry, because, well, it's not quite as strong as it should be. Wolf Bale's still great. Imagine being the Wolf Bale being like 10 might stronger against cavalry and armor, which would just ruin everybody. Uh, the Manikati would be better too. Sadly, that's not the case. Thank the goddess, the Crimean army has arrived. Lady has very red eyes. Those, is that just brown eyes or red eyes? I can't really tell. It looks like she has red eyes. I don't know why that stood out to me. I got a savior scroll. That's actually pretty handy. Uh, savior, the skill, allows you to pick somebody up and rescue them, but not suffer any of the penalties to your skill and speed, which is very nice. I like putting that on Marsha or Jill. I'll probably do it on Marsha this playthrough, just because Jill's already decked out with skills. And flying units, unfortunately, uh, don't generally have as much in the way of skill capacity. Any mounted unit, really. Flying units or horse mounted units just don't have as much capacity. I don't know why that is. I guess because they feel the advantage of flying is already too great, even though flying units are weak to arrows. There's already a lot of balance done to make flying units not as powerful as they should be, but they still end up being amazing because flying is just that good. This silly little green unit is still running out of his way to go kill people. And you guys can give him credit, he's very devoted to his job. Oh, and he doubles this wyvern too. Nicely done, sir. Here we have, what is that, a halberdier, a soldier, and a bishop, of all things? Interesting. Alright, well, we'll have... I don't have my flipping hair in this map, or this round, unfortunately, because of the aforementioned rescuing Grayson. But we can still deal with these guys over here before they become too much of a problem. I'm definitely more concerned about the wyverns than I am about the... Did I just one-shot that guy? I wasn't even paying attention. Alright, well, it stinks to be you, pal. Alright, obviously Jill can be handle these guys just fine, but I'm going to have her go for this wyvern because I'm a lot more concerned about them than I am about either of those bow knights. I keep forgetting it's raining during this chapter because the rain is such a faint looking effect it's hard to see. Unless the screen's like standing still and you're not paying attention. Like you can still kind of barely see it in the background but it's honestly a little difficult to notice unless you're really paying attention. And that is I believe A rank and axes for, for Jill. Yep, that is exactly what it is. That is ridiculous. So now Jill can use silver axes. <laughs> She's already reached A rank and axes and she started with them and she got promoted. That's absolutely insane. That's just how much I loved using Jill. So what I'll probably end up doing, rather than giving her the energy drop, is just forge her, like, a silver axe with max stats and let her rain, wreak havoc with that thing. That'll be a lot of fun. Alright, uh, let's see. Can Soren blizzard this guy to death? Betcha he can. This other wyvern, I mean. Oh yeah, easily. In fact, we're gonna let him do that. Goodbye, wyvern man. And thank you to that green soldier for enabling the one-shot instead of making me waste two uses of that blizzard tone. I think I actually crit him, too. Did you hear the crit noise when I did that? I think I did. Alright, let's see how Oscar does again. I'm half speed right now, so obviously doubling's not going to be happening, but... Let's see if Marsha can deal with this halberdier. Oh yeah, absolutely no problem there. And I think what I'll do is just take care of... 
and halberdier with Ike and then drop off race and somewhere out of the reach of those bow knights. Seems to be the most prudent course of action at this juncture, I think. What is their distance here? Okay, that's not that bad. So we'll just have Ike take care of this little guy. Not sure why we still have unpromoted soldiers running around the battlefield, but it can't be helped. We are getting pretty late in the game, but I think there still are a decent number of unpromoted guys to fight in the coming chapters. I don't know quite know why that is, but... Actually, that might, I think that stops with chapter 27. I think 27 is the... is... There's no unpromoted enemies on that map at all. Alright, so that's as far as they can go. So I feel comfortable dropping off Raisin right here. I'll leave Oscar there. I think I'm going to have him go and get the village next turn if he's capable of that. We'll send Lucia and Bastion up to go meet their friend Joffrey. I think they have some kind of special conversation if they meet up if they meet up with him there. At least I believe that's the case. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's the case. We'll get the rest of the crew moved up just in case anything bad happens. I will say on hard mode, this is a very different map. Uh, the enemy reinforcements are much more frequent and they're also much tougher. And actually making it up to that castle to save Joffrey before he gets overrun is actually a real concern, a real challenge to do. So even though this particular run on normal mode is kind of a pushover, I will say hard mode's a very different beast. In fact, this entire game, in a nutshell, is very different on hard mode, if I'm being totally honest with you guys. Um, I thought about doing a hard mode run my first playthrough, but my problem with hard mode is, well, it, it's pretty hard. And as a re I ended up having to restart a lot as a result, not a lot, but more frequently than I normally do because I lost units a lot more frequently. And I don't like losing units. So, oh look, there's more guys to kill. But we got stuff to do. I think what we'll do is just honestly go up there and get Ike to meet the... or hang out at the base and just get out of here. I don't like uh, giving up experience if I can help it, but this is going to take forever otherwise and I don't want to deal with it, so... I suppose I'll go down with Marsha and clear out as many of them as I can within reason here. Or making it... or before getting the heck out of Dodge, rather. Look at those two flippin' bonites to deal with. And Oscar is barely in range to grab the village, let's do that. What do we got? You're doing me that brought the princess. How do they know? Another scroll for us to use. What do you have for us today, sir? Nihil, nice. That negates enemy skills. That is pretty darn useful. There is a handful of enemies in this game that have incredibly annoying skills, and I'm happy to get rid of them. Alright, so we'll set up shop here. I'm gonna have... I could just have Jill go down there and make mincemeat out of those guys. I think what I'll do instead is we'll do a bird song for Soren and Boyd. They'll take care of the Bow Knights. At least I imagine they will take care of the Bow Knights. And we'll continue to send Ilyana up this way in case anybody needs help. Get Lucia up here. And Bastion. Get the rest of the crew going. I don't think anyone else is going to be popping in on our parade, but you never know. Alright, that's most of the map cleared out. Now then, let's see. Soren should be able to handle these guys no problem. He's blisteringly fast right now. Especially for a mage. Normally mages don't have that high of a speed cap, but in this one they do, and I like that a lot. I think mage's speed cap is 28 in this game, which is awesome. Sadly, it's not quite as good in the sequel to this game. In fact, mages got a little bit of a nerf uh, in Radiant Dawn. And by, by a little bit, I mean kind of a lot of a bit of a nerf in Radiant Dawn as opposed to Path of Radiance. Not to say the mages aren't bad, or the mages aren't good, rather, in, pa in Radiant Dawn. It's just they're nowhere near as good as they are in this one. Um, there's a lot of spec fan speculation that the original designer of Fire Emblem, the original concept creator of Fire Emblem, his name is Shozo Kaga. Uh, it, was it was very fondly speculated that he was a massive fan of the Sage class. Because in all of the games that he himself worked on, that being the first five Fire Emblem games in the series... Of course, none of them would, none of which are in English, but um, of those ones, the Sage class in each of them is ridiculously overpowered. 
And especially in Fire Emblem 4, uh, the Sage class is just absolutely brutal. Uh, one of the main bad guys in Genealogy of the Holy War, the fourth one, is a, is a Sage, and he's basically unkillable. And also, you get you yourself get a very overpowered Sage as well, and he's just unbelievably hard to kill. But, again, it's, it's very, very heavily implied that he's a big fan of Sages, and I think his original design philosophy with regards to Sages comes back in this game. Because Sages are very good in this game. Very, very good in this game. Uh, even someone like Ilyana, whose stat growths aren't spectacular, really shines and does a, and is very capable as a unit. That being said, they kind of made them a little more flexible too, like allowing them to use knives. I don't quite know why they did that. This is the only game in the series where they can. Uh, there are some instances where you get something like a mage fighter instead of a sage that can use swords. But in those instances, at least they generally have something measuring a strength stat. In this one, none of them do. I mean, I guess Bastion has 12 strength, but even 12 strength isn't all that great. Especially for someone who uses a, the lowest might of all weapons that exist in the game, so there is that. I think Marsha can... no, she's not quite in range, although that can change very quickly with the assistance of our bird friend. We're going to have Jill attempt to take out the Berserker here, and in fact she'll succeed because of course she will. Gotta make sure we're staying the heck out of the way of the Black Knight though. We don't want him showing up all of a sudden and wrecking our faces. Thankfully his movement is incredibly limited. And I actually don't think he's fast enough to double Jill even at this juncture. I think he's got like 27 speed. But I'm not, again, I'm not concerned about it. Speaking of, here's the guy again. Uh, yeah, 27 speed. So this is exactly how he was the first time we saw him back in Toha. Capped strength, capped skill, capped defense, capped defense and then some. Because he's getting 5 from his sword as well. 27 speed. He can't be doubled because the, the highest speed any unit can reach in this game is 30. Even with uh, legendary item boosts, it doesn't go any higher than that. So he can never be doubled. 22 resistance is still pretty solid too. And of course, he has Renewal, which is ridiculous. And Luna. You think the Black Knight's bad in this game, just wait until Radiant Dawn. Anyway, let's go ahead and let Marsha clear up this fellow over here. And by this fellow, I of course mean Marsha. She has a name, I suppose. And I think she can take care of this guy. I hope she can. Oh, uh, nope, that's one point too shy. We gotta use a lance. Sorry, buddy. Mr. Bandit, you have to get the Lance treatment today instead of the sword treatment. Because she's just one point too weak. It happens. I like Marsha a lot, but unfortunately, once she crosses the threshold of becoming a Falcon Knight, her usefulness starts to dip a little bit. I still love Falcon Knights. They're probably one of my favorite classes in the game, in any Fire Emblem game. I just, I wish they were a little more capable in the Strength Department. That's generally one of their weaker stats, unfortunately. Which is, it's, it stinks because they don't have any ability to use magic or anything, which is one of the things I really like about Awakening, by the way. Awakening allows Falcon Knights to use staves in addition to lances, so it allows them to, if they have crap strength but halfway decent magic, they can at least heal people. And they're very mobile. Lucia, my sister, why did you leave the princess's side? No time to talk, she's safe. Do your best to survive. Well, he's gonna be fine, I think. Alright, so we've cleared out the whole map. It just leaves... Well, except for Black Knight, obviously, but we can't kill him yet. It's actually not possible to even hurt him. Even if you have the ability to get through his 35 defense, or 22 resistance. So, we're gonna get Lucia out of the way. Let's see if Bastion and Joffrey have a conversation. I believe they do. Yes, they do. Why did you come back? I'll explain to you later. For the sake of the princess, expend your energy on living. Good plan. Alright, so we got the villages. The map is clear. Let's go ahead and get the heck out of here. I could talk to Joffrey rather than arrive, but screw that. There's no point. He just says, oh, I'm glad you came, and all that kind of, kind of garbage. Yet another general of Dayan is defeated. I look forward to our next meeting. Oh, very ominous. Notice he doesn't move. Mr. Black Knight there. I think if you wait too long, he'll start moving, like the last couple of turns. Because Fantasy Chapter... Or, turn 15 ends the ends the chapter, but... 
if you don't make it there in time, it's game over. But he'll start moving, I think, in like turn 12 or turn 13. See, she has a smi She kind of has that slight smile on her face right now, but she's nowhere near as happy looking as she was when Lucia and Bastion were around. Just she was absolutely ecstatic having them around, and it's really nice of it. It's really cool that we get to see that. Just the complete change in her demeanor when her friends are around. Shall we return? I should probably introduce myself. You and the others are also irreplaceable to me, so I ask for your continued support. And also don't die, because it's important. It's an honor, Ike says. That's very nice of him. And are we cutting away somewhere now? Nope, we're staying here. So, Joffrey and Lucia and Lincia were all raised together, from what I understand. I love this remix of the nightly theme. Like, if you heard something similar to this in Blazing Sword, uh, when we recruited someone like Wallace, I forget what the name of the song is. I really should know because it's one of my favorites, but it's basically the theme you hear when you're recruiting, like, a knightly chivalrous character. For the lack of a better term, and Joffrey is, I think, one of the only units you hear this theme for in this game. It might, he might only be the only one. No, Kieran does too. I'm pretty sure. When you get Kieran and he meets the princess, you hear that too. So basically, the Crimean knights and Mr. Bastion, the poet here. He's like Shakespeare if he could use magic. You will choose the road that allows us to continue living at your side. This is a really cool CG right here. The three of them just pledging their loyalty, or pledging their fealty to the princess. There's another couple of nameless guys in the background there too, but... So now, not only back home in Crimea, but we have uh, Elincia's most trusted retainers with her now. None of which we'll be using, probably, but they're there. <laughs> not gonna lie, I might trade out uh, Oscar for Joffrey if things don't go my way. We'll see. I got a little bit of time left. Ike, of course, runs out to meet the Black Knight for some random reason. I know how your mind works. I assumed you would attack me the moment you saw me. Well, he wasn't completely wrong. Perhaps you've learned to judge the importance of time and place. When you die here, you'll be at a breach of contract after all. Jeez. That's not a problem. All I have to do is win. Ready yourself. He's like, yeah, okay, whatever. So Ike is much, much stronger than he was the first time we met the Black Knight. Crit! For nothing. Nope. You're not as overly clumsy as I had feared. It is regrettable that your weapon is so poorly made. What? My armor is blessed by the goddess. Only weapons that are also blessed can so much as scratch it. So that's the secret of his seeming invulnerability. Not only is he absurdly fast, and absurdly strong and absurdly tanky, but unless you have a weapon that is blessed by the goddess, you can't even touch him. You should not worry about such trivialities. You possess the sacred blade Ragnell, do you not? And he's like, and you're like, wait, what are you talking about? So Ragnell is the sword that the Black Knight threw to Grail when he asked him to fight him back in the forest all those chapters ago. It is the counterpart to his own blade, Allendite. Tell me you were not an idiot enough to leave it in that place. You took it with you, did you not? The one you threw my father, the one he refused, that's Ragnell. Yes. I claim victory today. Next time, bring Ragnell. Otherwise, I'm going to get bored. So the only way we can hurt the Black Knight is with that sword he gave us. And we don't have it. Well, we do, but Ike doesn't have it at usable as a sword at this juncture. So uh, we'll talk about that briefly. We're going to go ahead and progress to the next chapter real quick. There's not a whole lot to talk about, I don't think, but we'll get into it anyway. I might take the time to do some base management. The army grows to its largest size yet, and with the addition of the retainers, truly becomes the armed force of its name. We only got like a hundred people, though, I thought. That's what Lucia said. Our numbers are barely number a hundred. Like, so we really didn't get that many more dudes. I mean, presumably the army numbers in the thousands. And the galleons dispatch much needed reinf- Oh, okay, so now we have Gallia warriors coming. The long-awaited warriors of Gallia march through the treacherous Marhot... Marhot? 
Mountain range. Series of jagged peaks. That sounds lovely. It's that big mountain range separating where we just came from from the capital proper. They slip through the gaps in the Dane forces and move through... The, wait, oh, the Gallia Rises. That's a really cool way to put it. Now we have, not only do we have Crimean Retainers and a large Begnian army at our back, but we have Beast People helping us out, and they are awesome. Strange Lands. This chapter sucks, and we'll talk about why it sucks in a second. Assuming we get that far. I don't know how long this little preparations bit will take. Oh yeah, we got to cut away here to Phoenicus Hall. It's Leanne. Ah yes, King Tabarn, the pirate man. Tabarn is so cool. I wish, you know, again, I wish I had the translation pulled up for this because, as I mentioned before, what she's saying actually is written in plain English. It's just the font that they're using is is illegible. We hawks enjoy the smell of the sea as well. Lord Lorazia is their is racing and Leanne's father. Apparently, he's not doing so hot. I would have thought his condition might have improved. This guy is Lots. You can, and apparently he can't understand what she's saying, but Tabarn can. Some of it, at least. He arrived, he was just like this. You'd never know it by how fluently he speaks our modern tongue. Now that you mention it, he does use some funny words when he gets angry. Apparently a letter just arrived. You you read the letter, didn't you? No, I just caught a glimpse of it. That's all, I'm sorry. It's a letter from Rayson. It appears the Crimean army has passed safely through Dane and is on its way to the homeland. Rayson is fine, but I wonder what happened. He doesn't give details, but he asks Phoenicus to send reinforcements. Hmm. Can't leave Lord Lorazia and Leanne here alone. Don't try that look on me. There's no way I'm taking you with me. Oh, he has a plan, does he? What kind of plan would that be? I'm off to Gallia to get things settled. I want you to watch over Leanne and help her pack. I don't have any idea what you're saying. Maybe I should talk louder. I don't understand why people think that's going to make any better. You want me to put this in that bag? I'm put. <laughs> what a doof. What she just said is that there's somebody there. And the reason I know that is because I know what's about to happen here. Someone is behind me? Ouch. And look, it's our friend, the Black Knight. You want your father to be killed, then by all means keep screaming. What a jerk. So, magically, the Black Knight appears in Phoenicus while the king is away. That probably isn't good. And here's Crimea Castle, where King Ashnard currently resides. Oh, that was fast. The Prodigal Son returns. I have gained that which you have requested. So, apparently, he kidnapped Leanne and brought her to the king. It's unsettling how similar they are. Well, that's spoken like a true racist. Tried to get her to free the Dark God from the Medallion, but all she did was get sick and die. Now they're talking about Lilia, that being Rayson and Leanne's older sister. The one we found who had been locked away in the basement of that temple. So apparently that was all Ashnard's doing. He wants the Dark God freed from the Medallion. I should have just killed her in the first place and saved some time. Capturing her was not an easy task. For you it did take quite a long time, didn't it? Diverting the sharp eyes of the Hawk King proved to be quite difficult. So it's probably them sending a, de a dummy letter to get him to leave the country. I know, but that I know you use that arcane powder to travel about at will. So the powder drains his strength. For that reason, I would rather not use it unless absolutely necessary. Everything you possess is fey and of unknown origin. Oh, 
My wyvern, Rajion, and this armor, which renders any enemy attack impotent. Both are well suited to me. So apparently Ashnard now also has blessed armor. That is fan-freaking-tastic, as if we needed the two people like the, in this scene to have any more protection than they do. And now he has the medallion and the galder as well. The conditions aren't bad. What is, well, he doesn't know how to do it yet. As long as the chess pieces are on the board, things will work out. Soon every knee will bow to Ashnard. Yeah, okay, pal. Uh-oh. So apparently the Black Knight didn't just knock this guy out, he straight up killed him. Curse you, Dan, this was evilly done. You'll not find me an easy mark. Oh no, no, Tabarn is pissed now. Alright, the reports of last battle. MVP Ike, no surprise there. We got money, I don't remember from where, but we got money. No deaths and no injuries. That's always fun to see. Alright, so we're finally going to end a chapter off on the base here. So I'm going to take some time and do some organization of everything. We'll do the info conversations and whatnot. Uh, I won't miss out on those for you guys, but I'm going to go ahead and do some inventory management. Probably forge a weapon or two and get everybody sorted out. So tune in next time for uh, chapter 25. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one, I promise. And by interesting, I mean I hate it. But we'll talk about that when we get there. So stick around next time if you want to see what that's all about. And uh, for those of you who watch up to this point, I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, if you are so inclined, I would also appreciate it if you would leave a comment and or a like on this video. And subscribe to the channel if you've not already. I would very much appreciate any and or all of those things. So until next time, this has been Seraphin. Stay classy, internets.